Carro also recognizes that Brazil has begun a new chapter of its development in health. How do you see our health public system? I think your source is an excellent system. It, it is unique in that not only it, it, is it enshrined in your constitution, but that your, your government has used health as central pillar and focus for integration across the country. I think over the years, the um, health system has achieved an extension of care, even to very, very remote populations, like your indigenous populations. And through um, the institution of the health system, you've been able also to address poverty and to um, address inequity. I, I do know that um, Stock Network, for instance, prioritizes the health of women and pays um, special attention to providing care for women. I think this this is represented also in, in the achievements that have been made, the reduction in undernutrition, maternal mortality. For us, Brazil continues to be one of the countries that is playing an increasingly more important role at the global level. You will know and you will see that Brazil is making an important mark in the global decision making and in setting global policy. Brazil has a very important um, program of self self cooperation and, and through that program it helps countries not only in Brazil but in the, in the wider Latin America and the Caribbean and also beyond, like the Portuguese speaking countries of Africa. She would like to know what are the priorities now that you are the Director General? Uh -huh. Okay, I, I think that your priorities are very much the priorities that member states have set. I, I see that it is very important that we address inequity. Inequity in terms of access to care, but also inequity in terms of access to the social determinants of health. I think as well, we have to place some emphasis on the chronic diseases, the non-communicable chronic diseases. Um, as well, we need to continue working on communicable diseases. We need to be ready for pandemics and influenza, especially. So um, there are continuing issues with communicable diseases. How do we continue as multilateral institution to remain relevant and useful for our member states? How do we remain relevant in a world that is rapidly changing? There are many other partners who have more money than us. And so what is our competitive advantage? How do we best accompany our member states, not only in their national health development, but also in their own projection um, at the global level? Because many of our countries, like Brazil, for instance, they are global players and, and they require that we accompany them in defining their own role, in implementing their role at the global level. PAHO has to be at the forefront of identifying where those disparities lie. Who is the marginalized? And how can we work with countries to address the barriers to, um, to care? In this era, we can't just look at what is the common vision because individual member states also want to develop and one size does not necessarily fit all. So increasingly, we too have to see how do you help individual countries in their national health development process, but how do we also ensure that this country can benefit from the expertise, from the wealth of information that is all over this region. I think it is true to say that Brazil recognizes as a country its responsibility to the rest of the region and has a, a very strong South-South cooperation, but a cooperation that emphasizes respect for the other country and a learning of mutually beneficial learning relationship. This is not always um, so um, with, with other member states. For me, when I say universal health coverage, every country must be able to define how it is going to meet the health needs of its population. My own vision is a holistic one, that those health needs are not just treatment or curative, that they are promotive, they are preventive, they are rehabilitative needs. To achieve that level of growth and coverage, you also must pay attention 
to public health, to the social determinants of health, but also financing, because our financing of health, health systems and services here is so fragmented that we are not getting the most for the money. We need an expanding cadre of healthcare workers, so not just doctors and specialists. We also need the family care physicians, but we need the nurses, we need the um, psychologists, we need the health social workers. So how do you expand the range of healthcare workers, but also how do you get them to work as a team? A very large percentage of the literature on health promotion is from Latin America but it is not accessible to most of the world because it is in a language that the most of the world cannot understand. I think we have a responsibility as PAHO to ensure that we are able to place on a global stage the wealth of experience and knowledge that there is. Our member states are complaining that we don't have sufficient technical expertise, that we don't um, respond to their needs um, in a timely manner and in an effective manner. I believe that in many of our member states, there is great technical expertise. If we are to remain relevant, we are going to have to learn how to harness this. Now, if we are to change this, we are going to have to work in networks. We are going to have to learn where in the country there is expertise and how do we enter into agreements and to facilitate the exchange, the fluid exchange of information and knowledge and experience but also of personnel. We have the WHO reform process. Brazil is a very important contributor of the process. All member states in this region, and Brazil is one of very strong proponents of this, they have said that increasingly they want to see that um, PAHO and WHO are moving in a much more um, supportive um, relationship. Brazil can help other countries in presenting what are some of its best practices, what are some of its experiences. What's going to be done in this field uh, uh, towards IT? I think for us as PAHO, it's going to be important to build the capacity of the Ministry of Health. I'm going to begin a movement in Latin America and I hope that Brazil can be very much part of it. I discussed it with the minister and he is very um, interested. What are some of the barriers to um, this unified access to care or the unified health system and what has been some of the experiences and how we can meet the gaps and um, help countries with meeting the gaps. We have come to Fiocruz, I'm fully recognizing the importance that Fiocruz has in um, national health development in Brazil, but also the importance in the region and at the global level. Brazil and, and Fiocruz, you are already a seat of innovation and a seat of scientific and technological development in Latin America and increasingly at the global level. For us at PAHO, it is extremely important to, to work with you. I think it is the greatest privilege to be able to serve a community and to watch a community grow as you work with them. And, and I just want also to exhort you never to forget that the community is the most important partner in the work that you do. Our health problems are rooted in what we call the social determinants. The access to water, the access to sanitation, the access to education, the access to, to good housing, the access to, um, to labor. Those are the things that determine the health of our people. So whereas it's, it's, all, it's important to have a clinic and to have healthcare workers and to treat conditions, it is even so much more important. Your, the work that you do has reverberations, so to speak, throughout the region and across the, across the world. Each one of you brings something unique to the work that is done here. That whatever you do, we expect that you will do it with excellence. And whatever you do, know that you are contributing to the health of the world, not just this region or Brazil.